what a relief. I thought you said 20 million years. <laughs> See? Living in the future or living in the past, that is what... <laughs> Living in the past or living in the future, that is what we are doing. But living in the now, that is what we have to learn. Hari Om. <clears throat> Good evening, Gurudev. We're very happy to have with us this evening Guru Raj Ananda Yogi from Cape Town, South Africa, originally from Gujarat, India. And he is the founder of the International Foundation for Spiritual Unfoldment, which is the parent organization, and their centers are known as meditation societies. In this country, the American Meditation Society, in England, the British American uh, Meditation Society, and he's got centers throughout the world. They're just beginning another one in Australia. And he's going to speak to us this evening on the guru-disciple relationship and ashram living. Thank you. Good, 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 good. Shall we? I'm sure you all do meditation. Could we meditate for a few moments together? Hmm? It would be nice. Namaste. I salute the divinity within you all. Guru Chela, Chela relationship. Hmm? Is there really a Guru Chela relationship? Hmm? What is a relationship? Hmm? Is that relationship a physical relationship? Is it a mental relationship? Or is it a spiritual relationship? I've always said that physical bonds can be broken, mental bonds can be broken, but the spiritual bond is never broken. Hmm? So if your sadhana is not completed and the guru starts you on a certain path, and if your sadhana is not completed, then perhaps in another lifetime you will still be on that path and the spiritual force, his love, is forever with you. I was once in an ashram and I met a man there who went to a guru. And he tells this guru, he says, Sir, I have come to you because my guru is dead. Hmm? So this guru replies, no, you are dead, your guru is alive. <laughs> huh? Between a guru and chela, there is an electricity. Something is awakened, and in that awakening, this electricity flows, a channel is formed, hmm? and the channel is formed for one purpose, hmm? is to awaken that which is already within you. Hmm? I always say that the duty of the external guru is to awaken the internal guru within you. Hmm? Yes. I will tell you a little story, which is quite a favorite of mine. You know, everything is inbuilt in you. Now, you know these soft drink cans we get? Do you get them in America? I believe they started off in America. 
Fine. <laughs> you know, everything starts here. Good, bad, and otherwise. Huh? 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 Good. So, this chap, who used to go to this cafe every day to buy a tin of that stuff which you even find in Sahara Desert Coca-Cola. <laughs> huh? Fantastic publicity. People are great huh? in all the external things. Very good. Very good. But I'm so proud to know that you're turning inward now. Huh? So to continue with the story. This man used to go to this cafe and he used to buy his tin of Coca-Cola and he used to take out a can opener from his pocket and open the can and he used to drink the contents. Now he did, did this for two days, three days, seven days, two, three weeks passed and the shop owner, his curiosity was aroused. Hmm? He says, what is this chap doing using a can opener? So one day he says, excuse me sir, do you know what that ring is for on that can? So this man says, yes, I know what that is for, but that is for people who haven't got can openers. <laughs> you see? Everything is there within you. Everything is there to open the can of your heart. Hmm? And that is where divinity resides, in the can of your heart. And what the Guru does, he shows you how to use the ring. Huh? Ramakrishna said, that amongst all my chelas, if there's only one person I could lead to self-realization, my mission in life is complete. Hmm? But if as many people as possible, sincere seekers are put on the right path, then eventually you will reach there. Hmm? That is the job of the guru, hmm? to show the way. What is your job? Have you ever asked that question? Hmm? What is your job? Vivekanan said something very beautiful. Hmm? The seed must be right and the ground must be well tilled for the seed to grow. Hmm? The seed can be very powerful, but if you are not prepared to plow your ground, how is the seed going to grow? Hmm? And on the other hand, vice versa, the ground could be good and if the seed is a rotten seed, hmm? and they are more expensive by the way, the rotten ones. Huh? Hmm? This force of love hmm? that flows opens you up opens the heart. Now what is the way to open the heart? Hmm? Many people feel a pinch. Hmm? What is the way? Now, the way is sadhana, which you do at home. Hmm? So, now, it means that you study theory. Good. You put that into practice through your meditational and spiritual practices, your sadhanas, and if this is achieved, hmm, even understanding gain comes into the mind, certain realizations dawn gradually. Hmm, these realizations dawn, practices are done, hmm, and then automatically without asking, you draw grace to yourself. Hmm? So, with meditation, what happens is this, that the mind, body and spirit of man, his three aspects, become integrated. 
And when that is integrated, then the light within, the light of the kingdom of heaven within, shines forth unimpeded, unblocked. The window is clean. With the sadhana, you are cleaning the window, so the light shines through hmm? in all its full glory. Hmm? Many people go about, oh, I've got to destroy my ego, destroy my ego, hmm? so that the light could shine through. No, you cannot destroy your ego. Nothing is destructible in this universe. Every word spoken is forever swimming around, swirling around in the universe, for nothing could ever be destructible. You cannot detract one ounce of energy from this universe, and you cannot add on a single ounce of energy either. It just is. Hmm? But through our sadhanas, and finding that integration within us through integral yoga, hmm? by finding that integration, by allowing the mind, body and spirit to operate harmoniously, hmm? that light within shines forth and it permeates every cell of your brain and every cell of your body. So as you meditate, you not op only open up the heart, but you also develop awareness. Your awareness expands. Hmm? The little hole that you're peeping through becomes bigger, and you have a panoramic view of life. Hmm? And having this panoramic view of life, you hold the entire universe in the palm of your hand. Ah. And as Blake has said, you experience eternity in an hour, but I tell you, you experience eternity in a moment. And that is your birthright. Hmm? Our foundation is called spiritual unfoldment, not spiritual development. The spirit does not require developing. It is developed already. It is just to be unfolded hmm? so that its full glory could shine through. Hmm? We always complain, we always complain, this is not right, that is not right. Huh? Hmm? There's no fresh air in the room. Hmm? But do we ever think that the windows are closed? Let's open the window a little bit. Hmm? And you don't need to call in the fresh air. It comes in by itself. Huh? So you see, meditation and spiritual practices, huh? proper action, be good, do good, huh? think right, act right. If these little simple conditions are met, then automatically grace comes. Just look at nature, just look at nature. This flower grows. Hmm? When the seed is planted, the whole of nature rallies to the seed. Hmm? The right amount of minerals are drawn to the seed. The right amount of water hmm, is given. The right amount of air, the right amount of sunshine, Hmm? All these conditions are given in the right proportion for this flower to grow. Because we know too much water will kill the flower. Hmm? Too much fertilizer will kill it too. Hmm? What is there? What is there? What guiding principle is there that gives this plant everything in its right proportion? Grace. That is grace. That is the eternal law which functions all the time. Hmm. That functions all the time throughout the entire universe. Everything acts in precision. Even in your body, billions and billions of cells. Hmm. 
are forever recreating themselves, preserving themselves and dissolving themselves all that time, billions of cells in proper precision. But we think and think and think. You know, life is so simple. Life is so, so simple. But it becomes very difficult to be simple. And why worry about self-realization? Who are you to worry about self-realization? Huh? Be good, do good, do sadhanas, and that will come. That will come naturally. If you cannot find oneness with your guru, your teacher, how are you going to find oneness with this entire universe of which you know nothing? <laughs> huh? <laughs> For the entire universe is within you, just to be unfolded. Everything is there, nothing to be added, nothing to be subtracted. Huh? But this mind makes you think and think and think. That's good to think, yeah? but not thinking as an end, but thinking as a means. We need analysis. We need to have understandings and certain realizations. We need that. Hmm? It has its own purpose. You see, you see. Living for the moment is what the Guru would teach. Hmm? Not in the past and not in the future. There's a meeting in England and this lecturer was talking of the coming of the end of the world and the lecturer said, you know, that uh, in 20 billion years' time, hmm, <laughs> the world is going to end. Right, so here one woman got warned. She, uh, so she got up and said, Sir, please I beg your pardon. Um, what did you say? How many years? He said, 20 billion years. He said, Oh, what a relief. I thought you said 20 million years. <laughs> 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 See? Living in the future or living in the past, that is what... <laughs> living in the past or living in the future, that is what we are doing. But living in the now, that is what we have to learn. For the future, if the past is past, gone. We have learned some lessons from it, yes. The future might never come, but to be able to find the present, the now, and when that is found, you have become centered within yourself. You have become integrated. Joy and bliss, that is you, not all those ramblings, and chatterings of the mind, that is not you. Hmm? If your mind wants to ram ramble around and chatter around, rather do bhajan and kirtan and dun, huh? chanting, or oh, meditation, do that. It serves a greater purpose. It calms the mind. Hmm? It calms the mind. From a narrow awareness to a widened awareness, Call it consciousness if you want to, but it's never altered. There is one consciousness, and that one consciousness pervades us all. Hmm? There is one mind which is in us all. Hmm? But what are you observing? The little waves, forgetting all the time that it is one ocean, huh? and calling the wave little individual minds. There is one mind and, of course, one spirit. Huh? One spirit in reality. Now, for the purpose of definition, we have divided all this up so that some understanding can be gained. But at the basis of it all, there is just this oneness 
nothing else exists except the one. I could talk for hours and hours and hours. But I could say it all in three words. I love you. For you are none else but me. Thou art that. And that is in me. Tattva Masi. And we go a little further. Brahmasmi. Brahmasmi. All one. All one. No separation. No dividing line. No division in the vision. That is what we aim for. Hmm? For truth is one, I and you are one. So beautiful. Huh? Hmm? And we don't try. Hmm? We don't try with a kind of conscious effort. There has to be effort in the beginning stages and that effort must become effortless in finding that oneness, a naturalness to be oneself. What one really is, is to become natural. That means in tune with the laws of nature and not against nature. Hmm? And then you become like this beautiful flower giving of its fragrance eh, to the world to enjoy. We're all flowers, and by creating this harmony of mind, body, and spirit, you are not only beautifying yourself, for it is the nature of the flower to be beautiful, but it also enhances the beauty of the garden. The environment is improved. Ah. You see, after God created this world and everything, this universe, you know, he was tired. So he thought, let me have a little rest and at the same time see the, my creation. Like I come here to America and England and all over the, around the world, you know, to see how the centers are functioning. And at the same time also, you know, a little bit of rest perhaps, which I don't ever get. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless. <laughs> Anyway, so he came down to earth. But when he came down to earth, people were still bothering him. You know, this problem and that problem and this problem and, you know, people have the, the way of turning a molehill into a mountain. Yeah, smallest little problem, oh, Guruji, Guruji, Guruji. Yeah. Nevertheless, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, God got tired. Now he had a council of advisors, you know. So he says, look, what should I do? I really need some rest now. So someone advised. He says, look, why don't you go up to the Everest, top of the Everest? He said, I know if I go up there, Hillary and Tenzing will climb Everest and then they will tell everyone and they'll be cues and cues again. Huh? So I will have no rest. So someone advised. He said, go to the moon. So God thought, he says, look, I will go to the moon. That is very nice of you to tell me that. But one day those Americans, Armstrong and all those, you know, they will come up there with their rockets. Eh? And then everyone will know and all oh, will start following them and still bother me all the time. And then he didn't know where to go, you see. So he called his council again. And now, I can't remember if Gurudev and I were on that council. <laughs> but, some <laughs> but some smart member of the council uh, made one suggestion. <laughs> he made one suggestion and he said, Lord, 
you go and hide in the heart of man. Yes. Yes. And when man discovers you in his heart, he will be so evolved that he won't bother you anymore. <laughs> That ends the talk for today. Next time I, I come to America, I definitely will, with, if I'm a, welcome, I definitely will come again. Now you know the secret why so many people are here. <laughs> we always keep it for the end. That was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at me, <laughs> I had to say something. Huh? <laughs> huh? Yes. Sounds familiar? <laughs> well, the same feather. <laughs> it's nice to hear the same, hmm? many ways, through many mouths. Hmm? At least huh, some of you would know, yo, I think he was right, because Guruji also said that, yes. <laughs> so, sort of witness. Huh? Yeah, the mind, mind has the tendency always huh, to doubt, could that be possible? Is it true? So if everybody says the same, then, oh, I think, if I, because everybody says it must be true. Hmm? It's true. That's why it's no one should not hesitate to hmm? listen to all the... Chuda? Chuda. Huh? Huh. Chuda. Ch it's not Chuda. Huh? Something. Hmm. Hari Om. Hmm. 